she wanted the Oregon Pipe Monument painted with a dog in it. And she wanted to be able to see that Mickey Mouse on the back, so I had the front paws of the dog up on a rock, and, and you could see the Mickey Mouse and everything. And I thought that turned out really quite nice. I have that. That's one of the paintings that I have in the video also. It was Mickey Mouse. So. Yeah, there was another one that was the end of the trail that the guy asked me to paint with the Indian at the end of the trail. I don't know whether I had a picture of that or not, but it seems like I did. But uh, that, was a, that was a wonderful painting. But when I got to the end of it, and I painted like the picture, and it was really dark, quite dark. And I told him I ought to lighten that lighten up to and not use the colors that's in the, the picture and he says oh I want to just like the picture and when I painted it and I looked at it and he put the picture up and he says it needs to be lighter doesn't it and I says yes it does and then, so I painted it we put light colors in around and that and it made it look really quite nice it turned out really well how did you get asked to paint the signs in Yuma Lakes dad well I'd been painting around and we'd been staying there at Yuma Lakes and, Yuma Lakes, you had two weeks that you could stay in, then you had to move out one week or pay for a week. And uh, so they offered to me to stay in the, the full season without having to move if I would paint the signs and things. And I painted uh, two murals on their bu one building down there they had, and then I went ahead and paid all the signs and everything and just refreshed them up is what I did. And uh, it took me quite a while to do that, but uh, we got to stay in away for the full winter down there for doing those things. Dad, you did um, talk about taking art classes. I'd like you to talk about the story where you were painting and so intently and enjoying your painting so much that you didn't know what was going on with all the rest of the class. Well, that was that painting that I was doing of Robert Woods. and. We, as a group of students, were there. I suppose there was 15 people in there, and the teacher, and he was, he'd go around to each person and maybe offer a little bit of help and things. And I know when he came to my picture, he told me, he says, your sky, could, you could use this brush stroke, and it was kind of get the colors that you wanted, and you just kind of pushed it on and moved it around a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. And I tried that, and uh, I really didn't like the results, but I, I used that plus a little more than what I, what the way I liked it. And I was really intent on doing everything, and I was painted most all that picture, that class. And all at once I looked around, and there wasn't anybody in the class. And I thought, where did they go? And I got up and went to leave, and they was behind me, and they were sitting there watching me. And he says, that, uh, go ahead, he says, we'd like to watch you paint that. He says, that is very good. Um, I know when Randy and I and Paul was living in Texas, you came down, I don't know if it was through the Thanksgiving, it seems like it might have been, or Christmas holiday, you got your artwork out and you painted a couple of days. It seemed like I was out on the lawn. He's on the back patio on the back on patio that on that, and I patio. painted a little bit. And Paul had a real desire to paint. And so he selected his paints, uh, paintings that he wanted to do, and one of them was still life, and one was the mountain scene. And I helped him show just how he could do some and mix the paints and how he could add to, to this rose and make certain things you had to do to make it look like a rose. And he painted a little bit, and then I'd help him a little more and show him, and then he'd do again. And we did that for a while, and, and he finished that that day. And the next day we did his uh, mountain scene, and I showed him just a little bit and told him to draw some of the things on with a pencil light to give him a guideline, which I don't usually do anymore. But then he did that, and he went ahead and started to paint, and I helped him very little on it. But just talk to him a little bit about what he needed to do, when he needed to put certain textures in by tapping or a certain stroke, and he knew what to do, and it turned out really well. I, I liked what he did, I was very proud of him. But later on, when we came home and that, he was gonna paint again, and he called me and he says, Grandpa, he says, I can't do it anymore. 
he says, I don't know what's wrong. He says, I need you to help me or something. But he, he never, I don't believe he ever tried again. But you've painted a lot of pictures, even in the last few years, you've painted quite a bit. In your home right now, you have quite recent pictures that you've painted. One of them is really beautiful to me, is the uh, ocean scenery down where Grandma Hearst lived, her... Sia Cortez. Sia Cortez, and uh, you've got a picture that you did of the ocean recently. In Oregon. From Oregon. Yeah, I did that, and uh, that was one that Mother wanted. The other picture that's on the one wall there, Mother came up with a picture, and she wanted to me to paint that picture because it was quite open, open space. She likes pictures with not a lot of stuff in. I like pictures with covered with stuff, but uh, I painted that and I put a few extra trees and things in and some rocks and things. But uh, uh, the lighthouse is another one, and that that's a mixture to a couple of things. That's a mixture of some of the things that was on the Oregon coast and more in one place. But uh, what I painted that for, and is if you look at the ocean and the water, there's rocks in that under the water as it's running over, and there's it's it's, uh, it's splashing up and everything. And there's a lot in that picture that I see that probably most people that most of you don't see, but it it has a lot of meaning to me because it was one of the funnest trips I've ever had. Now. You just said something that I was trying to decide how I was going to bring this up, but now you've brought it up, I can um, uh, maybe enhance on it a little bit. I was doing a lot of painting, and I wanted to learn how to paint trees and leaves. And I told you that I really was having a hard time with the colors and the shades. and. You spent a few minutes with me telling me what I should look at when I look at a tree and the different colors in the tree. And I want you to look at the tree that's over there and ex try to do that on this video to where you can explain to everybody when you look at that tree and you look at the leaves what you're actually seeing because I saw for the first time the colors and maybe what you look at it through as an artist eye that I don't think a lot of people ever see and it made everything I ever look at differently. Well yeah, that's true. When you look at a tree, any tree, it doesn't matter what kind it is or any other object, there's more than one color. You look at a tree you see green, <clears throat> but the green you see in that tree may even be almost black. And there's browns, there's yellows, there's and there's all kinds of colors in there, there's shadows and whatever. And you really have to look at it and study it. You'll notice the trees come, the leaves sections that come out in clusters. And it's positioned around. And that cluster may have three or four different colors or more in it. And it's hard to duplicate some of the, the things you really see. I found out that uh, a lot of times taking a fan brush or some of the other brushes as well it's kind of a bristle or heavier and you can mix your colors and you have more than one color on the brush but it's the colors you want that tree to look and if it's uh, light colors you turn that brush up with a light color on the top side and you just tap it around at different angles and things and you move to the next cluster the next cluster but each cluster is a little different than the other one. I don't know how to explain it. And you any. would put two or three different colors in. Or you'd put a lot of different colors and you lighten it and you darken it and, and it, it's just amazing. Uh, I had uh, one teacher tell me there was a pine tree he was uh, painting and he says, do you see red in that pine tree? No. He says, that's there. He says, there's actually red in that pine tree. And as I got looking at, uh, looking around after that, yeah, pine trees have a, a sharp brown or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, colors in it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so you have to incorporate those colors into there if you want it to be more real realistic. realistic. It's, it's, the eye is very important. 
in painting a, a picture of any kind. Because the eye is what, and the eye can be deceived too. Someone that's looking at that painting will see things that you don't see. Mm -hmm. Because everybody looks at something different. And sometimes <clears throat> you try to draw the attention of the viewer to a certain part of the painting by making it brighter, sharper, better in some way. And it usually is in a S form or a L shape. You don't paint the whole picture the same because on the outer edges, if you don't want to, that to be seen, you blend that in with a little lesser blur. To, you, might, you might call it a little blurring or different, but uh, you don't put the prominent colors there. And that's the object of a real painting, is to draw an eye to a certain thing that you want to be seen. Well, Dad, your painting has brought a lot of joy in it to many people outside of the family, inside of the family, people you've come in contact with over all these years. And you've been able to restore like the home that was burnt down in the yard, it's a loved place for people. What has painting done for you? Well, it's really made me a better person by satisfaction. I want to give a little illustration about one penny that I did on a satellite dish. A person was a fisherman, and he had a quite pretty large boat that he used out without riggers on, and he was uh, fished in uh, Prudent, out by Prudent Point in the state of Washington for salmon and whatever. And he brought me some pictures to paint, and I painted the boat, and it was out in the water. And that's not really interesting just to see a boat sitting in the water, so I had to liven up the water a little bit and things. And when he came by and he looked at the picture, he says, you haven't got the tie lines down on the outriggers yet. I said, no, I put that in last. How are you going to get them straight? And I says, I'll get them. And I'd hate to tell him how I did it, but I went and got a ruler, and I went and got a black pen, a very fine one, and put the ruler up there and draw the straight line from the, from the, <laughs> the upper, up piece down to the outrigger. And they were just as fine and straight as could be. And when the guy came by and he looked at it, he said, how did you put that line on there like that? And I says, very, very easy. <laughs> and that's all I told him. I didn't tell him how I did it. But uh, those kind of things are satisfactory. Mm -hmm. You really get a kick out of what you do. And, that, and if you, it's something that you do that looks good and people appreciate it, that means